Our country has undergone several stages of development from pre-Spanish times to the present. In meeting the needs of society, education serves as focus of emphasis of the leadership at certain periods in our national struggle as a race. In the Philippines, there are three levels of education, namely elementary, secondary, and tertiary. Public and private elementary and secondary education fall under the jurisdiction of the Department of Education, while tertiary education falls under the jurisdiction of the Commission on Higher Education. I, together with Michael Fritz Absalon and Joan Manlapas, listed down 20 legal bases of Philippine education. Educational Decree of 1863 The decree provided for the establishment of primary school for boys and girls in each town of the country. The Educational Decree of 1863 was an effort by Spain to reform the Philippine colonial education system. The decree established a complete system of education in the archipelago. It required two elementary schools in each municipality, one for girls and one for boys. Standardized the curriculum and established normal schools. Act number 74 of 1901. Enacted into law by the Philippine Commission, the act created a Department of Public Instruction laid the foundations of the public school system in the Philippines, provided for the establishment of the Philippine Normal School in Manila, and made English as the medium of instruction. About a year after having secured Manila, the Americans were keen to open up seven schools with Army servicemen teaching with Army Command selected books and supplies. In the same year, 1899, more schools were opened, this time with 24 English language teachers and 4,500 students. In that system, basic education consisted of six years elementary and four years secondary schooling, which until recently prepared students for tertiary level instruction for them to earn a degree that would secure them a job later on in life. A highly centralized experimental public school system was installed in 1901 by the Philippine Commission and legislated by Act No. 74. As a result, the Philippine Commission authorized the Secretary of Public Instruction to bring more than 1,000 teachers from the United States, who were called the Thomasites, to the Philippines between 1901 and 1902. These teachers were scattered throughout the islands to establish barangay schools. The same law established the Philippine Normal School now the Philippine Normal University to train aspiring Filipino teachers. Act number 1870 of 1908. The law served as the legal basis for the creation of the University of the Philippines. Enacted on June 18, 1908, an act for the purpose of founding a university for the Philippine Islands, giving it corporate existence, providing for board of regents, defining the board's responsibilities and duties, providing higher and professional instruction, and for other purposes. The 
the University of the Philippines aims to provide advanced instruction in literature, philosophy, the sciences and arts, and to give professional and technical training to eligible students regardless of age, sex, nationality, religious belief, and political affiliation. Vocational Act of 1927, also known as Act No. 3377. The Vocational Act as amended by other acts laid the foundations of vocational education in public schools and made provisions for its support. Technical vocational education was first introduced to the Philippines through the enactment of the Commonwealth Act No. 3377. Technical Education and Skills Development Authority serves as the Philippines Technical Vocational Education and Training Authority. What are the goals of TESDA? Its goals are to develop the Filipino workforce with world-class competence and positive work values and to provide quality technical educational and skills development through its direction, policies, and programs. Education Act of 1940, also known as Commonwealth Act No. 586, the Education Act laid the foundations for the present six years elementary course and made provision for its support. On August 7, 1940, the National Assembly passed the Educational Act of 1940. This act fixed the school entrance age at 70 years and required compulsory attendance in the primary grades for all children enrolling in Grade 1, adoption of the single session, one class in the morning, and another in the afternoon, under one teacher to accommodate more children, and the support of public elementary education by the national government. Notedly, during the Commonwealth period, President Manuel L. Quezon, in his desire to improve the educational system in the Philippines, created the National Council for Education, which served as an advisory body in educational matters. Significant, Significant educational developments during the Commonwealth period included the revision of the curricula in the elementary and secondary levels, Introduction of adult education to eliminate literacy as well as vocational and citizenship training to adult citizens in the country. Reorganization Act No. 94 of 1947 The Act placed public and private schools under the supervision and control of Bureau of Public and Private Schools. In 1947, by virtue of Executive Order No. 94 by President Manuel Rojas, the department was reorganized to the Department of Education. During this period, the regulation and supervision of public and private schools belonged to the Bureau of Public and Private Schools. Republic Act 5250 of 1966, the Act provided the legal basis for the implementation of a 10-year teacher education program in special education. Growing social concern for the welfare and integration of PWD voiced by parents and advocates including legislations led to the enactment of the law in 1968. established a 10-year training program for teachers and led to the admission of children with disabilities into regular public schools. However, without appropriate school and parental support, these children had difficulty coping 
with their regular classes and soon dropped out of school. Batas Pambansa Bilang 232 The Education Act of 1982 This was an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. In accordance with Section 2, this act shall apply to and govern both formal and non-formal system in public and private schools in all levels of the entire educational system. As provided by this act, the national development goals are as follows. To achieve and maintain an accelerating rate of economic development and social progress. To assure the maximum participation of all the people in the attainment and enjoyment of the benefits of such growth and to achieve and strengthen national unity and consciousness and preserve, develop, promote desirable cultural, moral, and spiritual values in the changing world. Republic Act 9155, otherwise called the Governance of Basic Education Act, was passed transforming the name of the Department of Education Culture and Sports or DEX to the Department of Education or DepEd and redefining the role of field offices, regional offices, division offices, district offices, and schools. RA 9155 provides the overall framework for school head empowerment and strengthening their leadership and roles and school-based management within the context of transparency and local accountability. The goal of basic education is to provide the school-aged population and young adults with skills, knowledge, and values to becoming caring, self-reliant, productive, and patriotic citizens. Act 2706, amended by Act Number 3075 and Commonwealth Act 180. An act making the inspection and recognition of private schools and colleges obligatory for the Secretary of Public Instruction. According to Section 1, duty of Secretary of Public Instruction to maintain a general standard of efficiency so that the same shall furnish adequate instruction. For this purpose, said secretary or his duly authorized representative shall have authority to advise, inspect, and regulate. Section 3 states, before operation, they must obtain permit from the Secretary of Education. Section 6 states, The Adept Edge shall from time to time prepare and publish in pamphlet form the minimum standards required. Republic Act No. 10533 An act enhancing the Philippine basic education system by strengthening its curriculum and increasing the number of years for basic education, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. The Enhanced Basic Education Program encompasses at least one year of kindergarten education, six years of elementary education, and six years of secondary education. In that sequence, secondary education includes four years of junior high school and two years of senior high school education. Kindergarten education shall mean one year of preparatory education for children at least five years old as a prerequisite for grade one. For kindergarten, 
and first three years of elementary education, instruction, teaching materials, and assessment shall be in the original or native language of the learners. That ends my part. Other legal bases of Philippine education will be presented by my group mates, Mr. Michael Fritz Absalon and Ms. Joanne Manlapas. This has been your discussant, Mr. Neil Cervantes Franco. In ancient Philippines, children were given the rudiments of education. Such education was both academic and vocation. The father trained his sons to be warriors, hunters, fishermen, miners, lumbermen, and shipbuilders. While the mother, on her part, trained her daughters in cooking, gardening, sewing, and other household arts. Hence, education during that time was geared toward their needs. Because of colonization by several foreign countries and several historical events, our education underwent several changes, although we also retain some of the ancient teaching which are practical even during our time. With the country's celebration of independence in 1946, scarcely seven decades ago, have come every aspect of educational system in line with the new status of a new nation seeking to achieve and maintain political and economic independence and to fashion a nation truly united out of social and cultural diversities. With the trifocalization of the educational system in the country, namely primary, secondary, and tertiary education, the government agencies handle each level to set overall educational standards and mandates on education system in accordance with laws and regulations. This topic will cover the following legal bases of Philippines education. The first three was signed and approved during the sovereignty of Ferdinand Marcos, year 1965 to 1986, Dex Order Number 25 of 1974, Presidential Decree Number 1006 of 1976, and Republic Act Number 5698, and the other three was signed and approved during the jurisdiction of Corazon Aquino, 1986 to 1992, which are Republic Act 6655 of 1988, Dex Order Number 49 of 1992 and DEX Order No. 1 of 1994. First, Department of Education, Culture and Sports or DEX Order No. 25 of 1974, popularly known as Bilingual Education Program of 1974. The order required the use of English as medium of instruction for science and mathematics subjects and the use of Filipino as medium of instruction for all other subjects in elementary and high school level. It aims at the achievements of competence in both Filipino and English at the national level through the teaching of both languages and their use as media of instruction at all levels. The regional languages shall be used as auxiliary language in grade 1 and 2. The aspiration of Filipino to enable them to perform their functions and duties as Filipino citizens and in English in order to meet the needs of the country in the community of nations. The goal of bilingual education policy First, enhance learning through languages to achieve quality education as called for by the 1987 Constitution, the propagation of Filipino as a language literacy, the development of Filipino as a linguistic symbol of national unity and identity, the cultivation and elaboration of Filipino as language of scholarly discourse, that is to say, is continuing intellectualization and PIF, the maintenance of English as an international language for the Philippines and as a non-exclusive language of science and technology. Presidential Decree Number 1006 of 1976, 
the decree was a legal informal recognition of teachers as professionals and teaching as a profession. In Section 2, it is hereby declared a policy that teacher education shall be given primary concern and attention by the government and shall be of highest quality and is strongly oriented to Philippines' conditions and to the needs and aspirations of Filipino people, even as it seeks enrichment from adaptable ideas and practices of other people. Next, Republic Act Number 5698. The Act created the Legal Education Board, whose task was to regulate and improve the quality of law schools in the Philippines in order to stop the increasing number of examinees who fail to pass the bar examinations given every year. Republic Act 6655 of 1988, popularly known as Free Public Secondary Education Act, created a system of free education in public high school. It is the policy of the state to provide for a free public secondary Republic Act 6655 of 1988, popularly known as Free Public Secondary Education Act, created a system of free education in public high school. It is the policy of the state to provide for a free public secondary education to all qualified citizens and to promote quality education at all levels. Department of Education, Culture and Sports, or DEX, Order Number 49 of 1992. This order serves as the guidelines for the selection of honor students in all public and private high school. All these schools were required to choose one valedictorian and one salutatorian and to set the limit, the limit of number of honorable mention to 1% of graduating schools. The eligibility requirements for becoming an honor student are the following. First, no grade below 80 in any subject and no falling grade in any subjects in the first two curriculum years. Completed third and fourth year studies in the same secondary school. Completed the high school curriculum with a prescribed year. He, she must be an active member in two clubs during the high school and conform to school policies and rules. Department of Education, Culture, and Sports, or DEX Order Number 1 of 1994. This order increased the number of school days to 200 days, 42 calendar weeks, inclusive of examination days for public and private schools. This department order is similar to Republic Act 7791, which increased the number of school days from 185 to 200 days. This includes elementary and secondary school calendar years started on Monday, June 6, 1994 and end on 200 class day on Friday, March 24, 1995. For public schools, the four two days periodical test was held on, on the Thursday and Friday beginning on August 11, October 20, 1994. And on August 11 and October 20, 1994, and January 12 and March 23, 1995, respectively. For sport calendar, the Palaro system of inter scholastic sports competition, inclusive of both public and private school, will be as follows lower level sports competition held from January to February 1995. The Palarong Pambansa was held from Sunday, February 19 to Sunday, February 26, 1995. For Christmas vacation break, for public schools, the Christmas break started on Friday, December 23, 1994, and class resumed on Tuesday, January 3, 1995, for private school. The break started at 2, at least 2 calendar days before Christmas, and class resumed not earlier than 2 days after the New Year. For university school calendar, the first semester started on the same Monday, October 8, 1994. The collegiate second semester started on Monday, October 24, 1994 and end not earlier than Friday, March 3, 1995. 
Graduate schools following the trimestral system establish their own school calendars and opening days, informing the appropriate DEX office of their particular schedules, provided minimum class hours and class day requirements are met. Each collegiate semester shall consist of not less than 8 10 weeks. The second semester shall begin 20 calendar weeks after the beginning of the first semester collegiate. Summer classes shall begin 24 calendar weeks after the beginning of the second semester. A minimum of 17 student contact hours inclusive of examination shall be required for one until of collegiate academic credit. For Education Week and Educators Conference, which was celebrated in the beginning of Monday, December 6, 1994, with Teachers' Day being observed on the same first day, the annual Educators Conference for the school year 1994-1995, which was held from Tuesday to Thursday during April 4 to 6, 1995. For additional holidays, in addition to regular holidays and special holidays, authorized in Executive Order Number no. 203, promulgated on June 30, 1987, DEX will permit the observance by public and private schools of other holidays, provided the minimum number of class hours and class days are observed. For additional class days, in justifiable cases of public schools, superintendent may authorize the holding of classes on Saturday in lieu of school day, except in schools that are in session throughout the year, provided that the proper notation is made on the monthly report on service of teachers or BPS Form 7. While in private school may at their discretion hold classes on Saturdays, to meet the minimum required class days by simply informing the appropriate DEX authority of the change. Thank you for watching Topics Covered Legal Basis of Philippine Education, DEX Order Number no. 25 of 1974, Presidential Decree Number no. 1006 of 1976, Republic Act Number no. 5698, Republic Act 6655 of 1988. DEX Order Number no. 49 of 1992 and DEX Order Number no. 1 of 1994. Date presented September 19, 2020. Educational Leadership 313 Legal Aspects of Education. Prepared and presented by yours truly. Never go to bed without learning something new. God bless everyone. Classmates, this is the continuation of the reports of Sir Neil Franco and Bam Joan Malapas. Here are some of the legal bases of Philippine education. We have the Department of Education, Culture and Sports, also known as DEX, Order Number no. 37 of 1994. Department of Education, Culture and Sports, Order Number no. 38 of 1994. Followed by Republic Act Number no. 7731. Republic Act No. 7722, Higher Education Act of 1994. Republic Act No. 7796, also known as the Technical Education and Skills Development Act. Next, we have the Republic Act No. 7836 of 1994, also known as Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994. And lastly, we have the Department of Education of the Dep Ed Order No. 34 of 2001. Let's have first the number 14, Department of Education, Culture and Sports, Order Number 37 of 1994. The order required all grade 6 elementary students to take the National Elementary Assessment Test that is given on the 13th Tuesday following the opening of the school year. The assessment test consists of the battery of tests of the multiple choice type. There are four subject areas, the English, Mathematics, Science, and Geographia, Kasaysayan, or Civica, or the Geography, History, Civics. This kind of test is a system-based assessment designed to gauge learning outcomes across target levels in identified periods of basic education. Empirical information on the achievement level of pupils or students serve as a guide for policymakers, administrators, curriculum planners, principals, and teachers, 
along with analysis of the performance of regions, divisions, schools, and other variables overseen by the Department of Education. Department of Education, Culture and Sports, Order Number 38 of 1994. The order required all the senior high school students to take the National Secondary Assessment Test that is given on the 13th Friday following the school year or three days after the NEAC has been given. The assessment test consists of battery of tests and there are four subject areas, the English and Filipino proficiencies, the mathematics, vocational aptitude, and science and technology. The NSAF replaced the NCEE, earlier abolished under RA number 7731, last June 2, 1994. Since an evaluation of the academic performance of each school remains of paramount importance, unlike the NCEE, passing the NSAT will not be a requirement for admission for the tertiary degree programs, nor there will be an overall NSAT grade. Nevertheless, all graduating high school seniors must take the NSAT. There will be no charge for taking the NSAT, of course. The NSAT shall be both have aptitude and achievement components. The NSAT, like I said, cover the verbal ability, the quantitative ability, the abstract reasoning, and of course the science and technology. The result of the NSAT shall be transmuted into percentage grades and shall be given an equivalent of one-fifth of the general average of each subject area. For instance, one-fifth of English 4, one-fifth of Filipino 4, one-fifth of Mathematics 4, one-fifth of Science 4. The result will be made available to the individual schools before the end of the school year. The National Education Testing and Research Center, in cooperation with the Bureau of Secondary Education and the regional offices, shall undertake the assessment activity. All bureaus, centers, regional and division offices of the department, and other cooperating agencies shall assist in this undertaking. All regional directors shall take charge of the efficient administration of this assessment test. Funding will come from the allotment of the DEX regional offices. However, on August 4, 1999, there are changes on taking the NEAT and the NSAP. For this year, both tests will consist of five subject areas with 50 and 80 items for subject areas in the NEAT and the NSAP respectively. The NEAT will allow include all will now include Filipino, while social studies will now be part of the NSAT in addition to the four subject areas covered in the previous year. The communication arts component, the English and Filipino, of both tests will include composition writing, which will be administered to sample schools only. Taking the NEAT and NSAT shall be a requirement for the evaluation of the schools by region, could it be division or district. A fee of 10 pesos shall be collected from examinees who are interested in the Certificate of Rating to be issued by the National Education Testing and Research Center. Department of Education, Culture and Sports, Order Number 38 of 1994. The order required all the senior high school students to take the National Secondary Assessment Test that is given on the 13th Friday following the school year or three days after the NEAC has been given. The assessment test consists of battery of tests and there are four subject areas, the English and Filipino proficiencies, the mathematics, vocational aptitude, and science and technology. The NSAT replaced the NCEE, earlier abolished under RA number 7731, last June 2, 1994. Since an evaluation of the academic performance of each school remains of paramount importance, Unlike the NCEE, passing the NSAT will not be a requirement for admission for the tertiary degree programs, nor there will be an overall NSAT grade. Nevertheless, all graduating high school seniors must take the NSAT. There will be no charge for taking the NSAT, of course. The NSAT shall be both have aptitude and achievement components. The NSAT, like I said, cover the verbal ability, the quantitative ability, the abstract reasoning, and of course the science and technology. The result of the NSAT shall be transmuted into percentage grades and shall be given an equivalent of one-fifth of the general average of each subject area. For instance, one-fifth of English 4, one-fifth of Filipino 4, one-fifth of Mathematics 4, one-fifth of Science 4. 
the result will be made available to the individual schools before the end of the school year. The National Education Testing and Research Center, in cooperation with the Bureau of Secondary Education and the regional offices, shall undertake the assessment activity. All bureau centers, regional and division offices of the department, and other cooperating agencies shall assist in this undertaking. All the regional directors shall take charge of the efficient administration of this assessment test. Funding will come from the allotment of the DEX regional offices. However, on August 4, 1999, there are changes on taking the NAIAT and the NSAT. For this year, both tests will consist of five subject areas with 50 and 80 items for subject areas in the NIAT and the NSAT respectively. The NIAT will allow include all will now include Filipino, while social studies will now be part of the NSAT in addition to the four subject areas covered in the previous year. The communication arts component, the English and Filipino, of both tests will include composition writing, which will be administered to sample schools only. Taking the NEAT and INSAT shall be a requirement for the evaluation of the schools per region, could it be division or district. A fee of 10 pesos shall be collected from examinees who are interested in the certificate of rating to be issued by the National Education Testing and Research Center. Now let's proceed to the next Republic Act number 7722, also known as the Higher Education Act of 1994. The Act created the Commission on Higher Education, also known as CHED, whose main task is to regulate and develop tertiary education in the Philippines. As stated in the Policy of Higher Education Act of 1994, the state shall ensure and protect academic freedom and shall promote its exercise and the observance of the continuing intellectual growth the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high-level and middle professionals, and the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. Due to the above-mentioned policies, the Commission on Higher Education was created. This commission should be independent and separated from the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports, but attached to the Office of the President for administrative purposes only. It covers both public and private institutions of higher education as well as degree granting program in all post-secondary education institutions, could it be private or public. This law separates colleges and universities from the Department of Education, providing its own independence, having the right to practice academic freedom and exercise such policies granted for its benefits. It also monitors and evaluates the performance of programs and institu institutions of higher learning for appropriate incentives, as well as the imposition of sanctions. It rationalized programs and institutions of higher learning and sets standards, policies, and guidelines for the creation of the new ones, as well as the conversion or elevation of the schools to institutions of higher learning. This act, which is a consolidation of the Senate Bill 1453 and House Bill 12200 was finally passed by Senate of the House of Representatives on May 4, 1994 and May 17, 1994 respectively under the reign of the President of the Philippines, Fidel V. Ramos. Next, we have the Republic Act No. 7731. The Act abolished the National College Entrance Examinations, or NCEE, to give the marginalized students a greater chance to gain access to college education. During those time, the result of your NCEE reflects on what course you will be taking on your college life. Whether you really like a certain course or not, NCEE results were truly affected. As mentioned in the previous order, the answer replaces the NCEE earlier abolished under RA number 7731 last June 1994, since an evaluation of the academic performance of each school remains of paramount importance. As being on the news just a few years ago, during the two years of the third administration, this state administered entrance exam for college students may be revived to manage costs from the free tuition in state colleges and universities as mentioned by one of the economic managers of President Duterte. 
they stated that the state universities and college and local colleges may implement their own admission rules on top of the NCEE, passing the national college entrance examination was a requirement until it was abolished in 1994. Now let's proceed to the next Republic Act number 7722, also known as the Higher Education Act of 1994. The Act created the Commission on Higher Education, also known as CHED, whose main task is to regulate and develop tertiary education in the Philippines. As stated in the Policy of Higher Education Act of 1994, the state shall ensure and protect academic freedom and shall promote its exercise and the observance of the continuing intellectual growth the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high-level and middle professionals, and the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. Due to the above-mentioned policies, the Commission on Higher Education was created. This commission should be independent and separated from the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports, but attached to the Office of the President for Administrative Purposes only. It covers both public and private institutions of higher education as well as degree granting program in all post-secondary education institutions, could it be private or public. This law separates colleges and universities from the Department of Education, providing its own independence, having the right to practice academic freedom and exercise such policies granted for its benefits. It also monitors and evaluates the performance of programs and institu institutions of higher learning for appropriate incentives, as well as the imposition of sanctions. It rationalized programs and institutions of higher learning and set standards, policies, and guidelines for the creation of the new ones, as well as the conversion or elevation of the schools to institutions of higher learning. This act, which is a consolidation of the Senate Bill 1453 and House Bill 12200 was finally passed by Senate of the House of Representatives on May 4, 1994 and May 17, 1994 respectively under the reign of the President of the Philippines, Fidel V. Ramos. Now let's proceed to the next Republic Act number 7722, also known as the Higher Education Act of 1994. The Act created the Commission on Higher Education, also known as CHED, whose main task is to regulate and develop tertiary education in the Philippines. As stated in the Policy of Higher Education Act of 1994, the state shall ensure and protect academic freedom and shall promote its exercise and the observance of the continuing intellectual growth, the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high-level and middle professionals, and the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. Due to the above-mentioned policies, the Commission on Higher Education was created. This commission should be independent and separated from the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports, but attached to the Office of the President for Administrative Purposes only. It covers both public and private institutions of higher education as well as degree granting program in all post secondary education institutions, could it be private or public? This law separates colleges and universities from the Department of Education, providing its own independence, having the right to practice academic freedom and exercise such policies granted for its benefits. It also monitors and evaluates the performance of programs and institu institutions of higher learning for appropriate incentives, as well as the imposition of sanctions. It rationalized programs and institutions of higher learning and set standards, policies, and guidelines for the creation of the new ones, as well as the conversion or elevation of the schools to institutions of higher learning. This act, which is a consolidation of the Senate Bill 1453 and House Bill 12200, was finally passed by Senate of the House of Representatives on May 4, 1994 and May 17, 1994 respectively, under the reign of the President of the Philippines, Fidel V. Ramos. Next, Next Republic Act number 7796, 
also known as the Technical Education and Skills Development Act of 1994. The Act's objective was to provide relevant and quality technical education that is accessible to all and to create the agency that will manage technical education and skills development in the Philippines. The Technical Education and Skills Development Authority was established through the enactment of Republic Act No. 7796, otherwise known as the TESDA Act of 1994, which was signed into law by President Fidel V. Ramos on August 25, 1994. This act aims to encourage the full participation of and mobilize the industry, labor, local government units, and technical and vocational institutions in the skills development of the country's human resources. A major thrust of TESDA is the formulation of the Comprehensive Development Plan for middle-level manpower based on the National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan. This plan shall provide for a reformed industry-based training program that includes apprenticeship, dual training system, and other similar schemes. TESDA is mandated to integrate, coordinate, and monitor skills development programs, reconstruct efforts to promote and develop middle-level manpower, approve skill standards and tests, develop an accreditation system for institutions involved in middle-level manpower development, fund programs and projects for technical education and skills development, and of course, a trainers training program. Overall, TESDA formulates manpower and skills plans, sets appropriate skill standards and tests, coordinates and monitors manpower policies and programs, and provides policy directions and guidelines for resource allocation for the TVET institutions in both the private and public sectors. Next is the Act that we are very much familiar with, Republic Act No. 7836 of 1994, known as the Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994. The Act made it mandatory for people pursuing a career in teaching to take the licensure examination that are administered and regulated by the Professional Regulatory Commission or the PRC. This Act recognizes the vital role of the teachers in nation building and development through a responsible and literate citizenry. It shall promote and ensure quality education by proper supervision and regulation of the licensure exam examination and professionalization of the practices of teaching profession. We are very much familiar with this act, so let's dwell on the failure to pass the merit examination. If a teacher fails to pass the merit examination, he or she is allowed to take examination for the second time. If he or she pass or fail for the second time, then he or she is required, remember, required to take the DEX accredited refresher course or program before being allowed to retake the examination. And here are also the same qualification requirements for applicants. It should be a citizen of the Philippines or an alien whose country has reciprocity with the Philippines in the practice of the teaching profession. At least 80 years of age, it should be in good health and with good reputation with high moral values, has not been convicted by final judgment by a court for an offensive involving moral turpitude. A graduate of a school, college, or university recognized by the government and possesses the minimum educational qualifications as follows. For teachers in preschool, a bachelor degree in early childhood education or the BSET or its equivalent. For teachers in elementary grades, a bachelor's degree in elementary education or the BSET or its equivalent. For teachers in the secondary grades or bachelor's degree in education or its equivalent with a major or minor or bachelor's degree in arts and sciences with at least 10 units in professional education. And of number four, for the teachers of equivalent and two years technical course or bachelor's degree in the field of the specialization or its equivalent with at least 18 units in professional education. Here are also the incentives that a pastor can get in which some of them are familiar to us. Teachers who can pass the merit examination shall be awarded a diploma of merit by the board. They can earn their points for purposes of promotion and salary or to a higher position or grade level. 
the picture also will be placed in the priority list of government scholarship and enjoy other benefits promulgated by the board itself. Lastly, we have Department of Education, Deputy Order Number 34 of 2001. The order required all public elementary and high school students to read at least one book in the vernacular and one book in English per year before they can be promoted to the next higher level. Starting on the school year 2001, this order has been granted as tepid order. For purposes of this order, the vernacular is defined as any one of the following. The national language or Filipino as defined by the Commission Sawitan Filipino. The regional lingua franca as defined by Dex Memorandum Number 153, Series of 2001, which may be any of the following. Arabic, Bicol, Kapampangan, Cebuano, Ligainon, Ilocano, Tagalog, or Waray. The local language, which is the language of the community where the school is located. For the purpose of order, English is defined as any one of the varieties of world Englishes including Philippine English, American English, and the British English. The responsibility of collecting the evaluating evidence of student compliance with this order is hereby given to teachers in charge of language classes. On the upper levels, these are teachers handling classes in Filipino under English. On the lower levels, these are all teachers, provided that all expenses for this program may be charged to appropriate local funds, as well as school board funds or other pertinent funds subject to the usual accounting and auditing requirements. Expenses of the DEX Reading Committee may be charged to 1 MCS funds, subject to the usual accounting and auditing requirements. So that's all of my report. Thank you and God bless. This is Michael Fritz, Fantasy Absolute Reporting.